As we've already said, this isn't real. This is purely performance art. So it gives us two very distinct ways in which we can enjoy it. If you're a modern wrestling fan with an online- oh, ha, 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 That's so fucking cool. Shout out to you, Wrestling Flashback, man. That's cool. <laughs> Oh man, that was cool, man. I'm I'm glad you put this in here, man. Shout out to Wrestling Flashback. This was dope. This is this is a good time, man. This is this is this is iconic right here. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So I'm gonna check out what makes pro wrestling the greatest show on earth. Now, uh. Somebody has sent this to me to uh, on Discord to check out. And I definitely want to see what Wrestling Flashback has to say about this. Because, uh, I mean, let's keep it a buck. I'm a fan of wrestling. I'm a fan of pro wrestling. I'm a fan of um, entertaining matches, competitive matches, and a good story within the wrestling. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of all of that. You know, the competitive nature, great rivalries, great feuds, like intensity, you know, iconic, memorable moments that you can always look back on. All of that matters because when you're watching wrestling, for me, at least, it gives me uh, that sense of being able to, you know, relive my childhood. You know, that's why I get so excited. That's why I get so animated because, you know, it, it reminds me of my childhood, especially if it's good and entertaining. You know, it's a form of entertainment that, you know, can really bring out some some unique emotions. And sometimes it can bring people together. Sometimes it can help you forget about your day to day struggle. So we're going to check out how he feels about what makes pro wrestling so great. Should be a great video, man. Uh, appreciate all the love and support. I'm going to link down our original video so y'all can check out Wrestling Flashback. His other uh, videos on his channel. Uh, it's definitely a good watch, even just without reacting to it on camera. He has some good videos to just to watch on your free time. Professional wrestling, a form of entertainment loved for generations by millions of people around the world. However, for many people, those two words still conjure up an image of something that's childish, with its fans perceived as unsophisticated, mindlessly cheering for scripted drama while ignoring the lack of genuine athletic competition. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest, it's super gay. No, oh, this guy here, I made a clip. Well, not a clip, but I talked about this, made a video about this guy, and that's his opinion. He feels like it's super gay. There's other people that feel the same way. I don't give a fuck. It's what I like. It's what I enjoy. It's what millions of other people enjoy. That's how I feel about it. I mean, if you think it's gay, cool. I don't give a damn. There's nothing wrong with being gay. But the way he's using it and the term he's saying it in, we get it. <laughs> it's super gay. There's nothing wrong with being gay. Nothing. And there's nothing wrong with being a fan of pro wrestling. But it's the same thing. Yeah, he's 40 years of age. He's walking around in a luminous orange t-shirt and a headband talking about nobody can see him. We can see him right there. He's a, he's a big fat 40-year-old failed Mr. Olympia motherfucker. Do you know what I mean? That dweebs, those guys. When you already know huh. the Undertaker's going to take out freaking Triple R or whatever. Triple H. Yeah, Come Triple on. H. You already know it going into it. It's just lame what all these guys are doing. It's fake. It's lame. It's stupid. It's gay. It doesn't make any sense. It's frequently described by... That's crazy, bro. It's so crazy how people really think that way about this shit. I think it's all fake. It's cool. <laughs> I'm proud to be a fan of wrestle uh, uh, of pro wrestling. So critics as a fake show where big strong actors pretend to fight the stories are said to be silly and the costumes are said to look ridiculous they say it's all about making money by fooling fans with made-up drama bad acting and over-the-top action so assuming that this is true and it is just fake melodramatic nonsense have you ever stopped to wonder why for decades millions of people tune in each and every week to watch it or why many more all around the world pay hundreds if not thousands of dollars to show up and watch it live surely there must be something more to it. Well, for those of us who do watch it, that description couldn't be further from the truth. No, for us, it's something far different. A totally unique art form that combines athleticism, storytelling, and mm -hmm. performance. The wrestlers are like actors and athletes in one, using their bodies to tell a story in the ring. The choreography of the moves, the character development, and the dramatic arcs all contribute to a unique and dynamic form of live theatre. Mm -hmm. Pro wrestling has its origins in the carnival circuits of the 1900s, with the idea during this time being that strongmen would simulate fights for audiences in order to draw in a 
crowd of paying spectators. Of course, that didn't mean there weren't real fighters taking part in this whole endeavor. No, occasionally such performers named shooters would be mm -hmm. brought up to the stage later on in the show, from there challenging anyone in the audience to face them. Needless to say, when these shooters inevitably took down the audience member in question, any doubts about the legitimacy of what was going on were settled, at least temporarily. And that brings us into the first element of what makes wrestling such a fascinating form of entertainment, the boundary it blurs between reality and fiction. Now, there's yeah. a certain point in all of our wrestling fandoms, usually when we're pretty young, that we realize what we're seeing on screen isn't exactly real. Mm -hmm. After all, if Hulk Hogan is taking so many punches to the face, then how come he doesn't have any bruises? And if Bret Hart just got dropped on his head with a pile driver, then how in the hell is he walking around again a couple of minutes later? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer to that, as we all soon come to learn, is that it isn't a real fight. Rather, it's a stage one designed to look real. And it's our knowledge of this as we get older that makes wrestling so unique. Sure, when we sit down to watch a movie, we all know the actors on screen aren't really the characters they're portraying. But with wrestling, it somehow feels different, as what we're watching clearly isn't a movie. No, it's something which presents itself as a sport, where athletes will take part in a physical competition with each other on a weekly basis. And because of this, it automatically feels more akin to watching something like boxing or the UFC, a far more legitimate endeavor. But as we've already said, this isn't real. This is purely performance art. So it gives us two very distinct ways in which we can enjoy it. If you're a modern wrestling fan with an online uh <laughs> that's so fucking cool shout out to you wrestling flashback man that's cool <laughs> oh man that was cool man I'm, I'm glad you put this in here man shout out to wrestling flashback this was dope this is this is a good time man this is this is this is iconic right here. <laughs> I'm presence. Then you're likely watching the show on two Shout different levels. Sandy. With one being the fiction which is playing out on screen, and the other being the often far more interesting stuff that's happening off screen. And again, while there is an element of this to most forms of entertainment in wrestling, it's not uncommon for this off-screen discourse to completely dominate things and become the real story. Mm -hmm. With that same story sometimes even circling back around to the on-screen product again. Take the story of CM Punk. Back in the late 2000s, the WWE was the power house of professional wrestling in the western world and the company most people who haven't even <clears throat> passing familiarity with the business are likely already aware of at this time they were at their absolute lowest when it came to the quality of their television and the reason for this well vince mcmahon then owner of the company had at some point during the decade completely lost touch with what his audience wanted to see and so because of that it often felt like watching a show which was specifically written to disappoint fans luckily for those fans however there was one bright beacon of hope cm yeah, punk. punk a cult hero who broke the rules at every point and who was very vocal about his distaste for the way the company was being run. In fact, in one now iconic moment in the summer of 2011, he would actually shatter the fourth wall when he cut a shoot promo on an episode of Monday Night Raw. There's one thing you're better at than I am, and that's kissing Vince McMahon's ass. I don't know if you're as good as Dwayne, though. He's a pretty good ass kisser. Maybe this company will be better after Classic. Vince McMahon's uh... dead, but the fact is... It's it's gonna get taken over by his idiotic daughter and his doofus son-in-law and the rest of his stupid family. Punk's words blurred the lines between scripted entertainment and real life mm -hmm. grievances. This speech resonated deeply with the segment of the audience that had given up on the product. Punk talked about his own dissatisfaction and feelings of being underappreciated within the company. His candid remarks about potentially leaving WWE when his contract expired added a layer of unpredictability and drama to the storyline. The promo was significant because it brought a raw, unfiltered perspective to yeah. WWE programming. It resonated with fans' real-life frustrations and transformed Punk's career while reinvigorating interest in the WWE product. This was a case of the fans not knowing if it was real or part of the story, which created so much intrigue. I have had friends. And this is why I say wrestling is just a, a unique medium, a unique way to be entertained because, yes, you understand there's storylines and things are predetermined, but you don't know, one, which way it's going to go. You don't know what's being blurred into reality. When they bring in real life stuff, you don't. The best best part of wrestling is when you don't know where the work and the actual shoot begins and end. When you're able to blend the work shoot together and you don't know where it begins and end, that's when you got somebody. That's the best part of wrestling right there. Not really knowing what's real and what's fake or what's like you know a shoot or what's a what's a work you know work for this company and be unceremoniously fired they deserved it they deserved yeah. it 
They deserved it. Why? Because you don't know what makes a superstar in 2011. CM Punk was just about the coolest thing in wrestling because in many ways, he became the voice of a whole generation of fans who felt like they weren't happy with what they were being given by Actuals. WWE anymore. Unfortunately though, by the time it was all said and done, CM Punk would eventually quit WWE in protest over many of the same issues he first aired during his original shoot promo. In January of 2014, he would famously walk out on the company. And a few months later, he would be formally fired on his wedding day. No prizes for guessing then that this left a lot of bad feelings between the two parties, with it feeling after a while that there would never be a reconciliation there. In fact, it got so bad that whenever WWE put on a particularly bad show over the remainder of the decade, fans would often drown out the proceedings with chants of CM Punk, CM Punk as a form of protest. You're gonna have to be louder. Are you chanting Cena sucks? Daniel, these people want you to quit just like CM Punk did. If you guys could keep that up for about two minutes and 15 seconds, you'd last one second longer than Punk did. What's crazy is boys was chanting his name for almost 10 fucking years, bro. It's fucking crazy, dog. But that level of anger and frustration being directed towards the company wouldn't be entirely necessary by the time 2019 rolled around, as this was when an alternative league suddenly sprouted up in the form of All Elite Wrestling. In 2019, after years of dissatisfaction with the monopoly that Vince McMahon and the WWE effectively held over the North American wrestling industry, four performers, namely Cody Rhodes, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks, teamed up with the billionaire owner of both the Jacksonville Jaguars and Fulham Football Club, Tony Khan, to form the first real competition WWE had experienced in almost two decades. This was a success right off the bat. After years of being desperate for something they could get invested in and enjoy on a level that wasn't hate watching, AEW became the talk of the town for wrestling fans. He did. With it at one point beginning to approach the level of TV ratings WWE were pulling in after only a couple of years of existence. That said, for as successful as AEW was, there was always that one final piece of the puzzle fans wanted to see added to it. And that was the inclusion of CM Punk, the man who in many ways symbolically started the whole revolution which led to the company being forced with his blistering shoot promo back in 2011. Cut to the summer of 2021, and after much speculation, word begins to filter around that yes, finally, CM Punk has decided to return to wrestling. And while his name was never mentioned on TV during the lead up to the event, AEW made it very clear that he would be making his long anticipated return for them. What followed on from there was a moment of pure emotion. Facts, when Punk's bro. music hit that night and he came out of the curtain, the camera literally picked up grown men in the audience Crying, who bro. were in full blown tears. <laughs> Why were they so emotional? After all, this was just a wrestling show, right? Well, it was more than that to them, because what this moment represented was the climax of a decade-long saga of one man raging against the machine, ultimately failing and then coming back years later to help boost the upstart rebel group in their own fight. It was the kind of thing which was so long in its construction, it could never be fully portrayed in a two-hour movie. Only for them to fucking shit the bed with him. Ugh. They shit the bed, bro. <laughs> if I'm Tony Khan, this is one of the greatest mistakes. I don't care about what y'all talking about. Oh, CM Punk was the cancer. All this other stuff. Y'all got to stop this. He was their biggest star. There's no way you let this guy walk out. You figure something out. Y'all come together as adults and make it work, bro. That's all I'm saying. They literally let go of their biggest star. And it didn't have to be that way. It's unfortunate, man. It really is unfortunate, bro. And because so much of it was built around the real people behind the characters and not the characters themselves, it felt that much more real of a moment when Punk took the mic and thanked the fans for chanting his name all those years he'd been gone. Yes, it was a hell of a story. And goes to show that when it comes to wrestling in the modern day, reality often plays just as big of a role as the fiction. But the story didn't end there, as that's the beauty of wrestling. It's a continuous saga with so many twists and turns. During CM Punk's first year with AEW, rumors began circulating around backstage that he had used his influence to get a former friend of his, Colt Cabana, fired from the company. And considering Colt Cabana was so well liked by others, particularly the Young Bucks, this left some ill feelings. And this all eventually led to things simmering to the point that during a press conference following their all out 2022 pay per view, Punk decided to cut yet another shoot promo, with his ire this time being targeted at the people who he felt were wrongly Tony spreading rumors nothing, about him, bro. making him look bad. What did I ever do in this world to, go to deserve an empty headed, 
fucking dumb fuck like Hangman Adam Page to go on national television and fucking go into business for himself. Then after this was over behind the scenes, he'd go back to his locker room where the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega decided to confront him over the comments he'd just made, leading to a legitimate brawl breaking out and all four men not only being suspended, but being stripped of the titles they held. Obviously then, as such suspensions directly affected storylines, it meant that they had to be addressed on television. So that's why the very next week, AEW owner Tony Khan spoke to the fans directly when he explained that yes, as a result of the very real fight which took place at All Out, all four men would be gone for the immediate future, and that the the belts they held would be vacated, and once the knowledge was out there, anything which had been taking place in storyline suddenly felt far less important than what was really happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Would the four men in question return, and if and when they did, would the whole thing be turned into a storyline? Those were the questions everyone had now, to the point that it became when it should have. It's, 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 yeah, this this is what, what you call walking away from millions of dollars, bro. Just turn the shit into an angle. Fuck all that. Y'all don't want to work together? Too bad. Y'all work for me. Let's work. Make some damn money out of it. Set aside your differences. Be grown men, grown adults. All right, I don't have to like you, but let's work, make some fucking money. Call it a day, bro. They, millions of dollars were left on the table. That would have been premier feud. That would have been arguably AEW's best feud. CM Punk. The Young Bucks, all that, oh, that shit would have went crazy. And they didn't do it with nothing. All anyone was talking about. Yes, by now, reality had bled into the fiction in such a way that it became impossible to ignore. And the fiction started playing up to this too, because once everyone involved in the fight eventually returned to TV, they'd repeatedly take side digs at each other on screen. Despite the fact they now had to be segregated onto separate shows, on account of fears another fight would break out, should they be allowed to be in the same building again? That's because I am the one true, genuine article in a business full of counterfeit bucks. And those fears of another fight breaking out eventually reached their peak at their all-in pay-per-view in 2023, where at an event filled with 72,000 people in Wembley Stadium, CM Punk got into another backstage fight, this time with real-life friend of the Young Bucks, Jack Perry. So as a result Stupid. of that, he'd be fired from AEW outright, just as he was fired from WWE all those years prior. But from there, he would do the unthinkable. On November 25th, 2023, <laughs> he'd return to the company that fired him nearly a decade prior. That's right, after all those years of bad feeling, the whole thing appeared to have come full circle as Punk was right back where he started. And this tale of him going from champion of the people in WWE to exiled martyr to prodigal son making his return in AEW all the way back to the employee of the company he once hated so much is exactly the kind of story you'd be so hard pushed to find anywhere other than in the world of professional, professional wrestling. wrestling. As it requires so many different elements of storyline and reality coming together in order to make it happen. The payoff was extraordinary, with fans all over the world bro. losing their mind at the return. <laughs> yup. I lost my shit, And in bro. many ways, the story still isn't over. No, now it's just playing itself out in two separate companies because upon returning to WWE, CM Punk found himself being given a less than welcome response by many in the locker room, who were fearful that he'd bring his unprofessional behavior back over there with him. And this has led to most of his feuds since his return, focusing on his opponents, accusing him of being a toxic presence in general. Mm -hmm. You spent 10 years slandering every single person back in that locker room. I don't want to spend one more second Second, one more ounce of energy on that hypocrite. Meanwhile, back over in AEW, the Young Bucks would use real security footage from Wembley Stadium, showing the fight between Punk and Perry to start a whole new storyline, where with all three now aligned together on screen for the first time, they've decided to enact a hostile takeover of the company <laughs> after attacking their boss, Tony Khan. Really, where else could you get this level of layers in your entertainment? And it's not just the blurring of lines between reality and fiction that makes wrestling so special. No, there's so much more to it than just that, because if you ignore all the real backstage fights and the legitimate politicking going on behind the scenes and instead just focus purely on the fantasy you're seeing playing itself out on television, it's still captivating. And why is that? Well, because wrestling is totally unique in that it's not quite a sport and not quite theater. Sure, mm -hmm. it often portrays itself as a sport, but for every match which takes place, there's also a backstage segment or an in-ring interview which furthers storylines. So in many ways, it's just as much live theater as it is sport. Live theater which can cover every aspect of the human condition, whether that be cathartic drama, such as mm -hmm. the rise of 
Daniel Bryan in 2014, or pure comedy, which can be found in characters such as WWE's R-Truth or AEW's Orange Cassidy. And that's just the North American style of wrestling. On top of this, there's also the different variations of it across other different cultures. Take Japan, for example, Jesus. probably the second biggest market for pro wrestling in the world. Uh -huh. There, things are portrayed very differently, as rather than producing so much of the pantomime-ish storylines you would get in the North American wrestling, they instead treat things far more legitimately, yeah, with shows even often being reported on in real sports newspapers. Yeah. And this is reflected in their overall presentation too, <laughs> with shows usually being laid out like UFC or boxing cards, and any promo segments generally being done in the form of post-show press conference style mm -hmm. interviews. Then there's somewhere like Mexico, a country with a proud wrestling tradition in itself, though their tradition is based far more on telenovela style storytelling mm -hmm. and incredibly acrobatic high-flying theatrics. Yep. In fact, if you were to venture over there to watch a show from one of their top promotions, you'd see something completely different to what you'd get anywhere else. An event that looks more like a Cirque du Soleil show than a soap opera you might get in the States. Facts. So if you're a fan of wrestling, then there's guaranteed to be something which can suit your own personal tastes. In the modern day, where the once closely guarded secrets of the industry have long since been exposed, pro wrestling truly can be anything. All you need to have is an engaging character to root for, a character who people can live vicariously through. After all, this was exactly why audiences were so into pro wrestling back at the turn of the millennium, as with Stone Cold Steve Austin serving as the perfect My avatar guy. for Blue Collar America, he was able to draw in fans in droves, who all secretly wished they could beat up their own boss on a weekly basis. And this is why I say it works. Because you can, you can get into a character, a person, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, like he just said, what made him work is he was the no-nonsense guy that would attack his own boss because he didn't give a damn. How many of us wanted to Stone Cold stunner our boss when they were, we felt like they were abusing their power. We felt like they were being assholes because they are our boss. How many times you wanted to just slap him across the face, but you knew once you did that, not only are you probably going to jail for assault, but you lose your job. You lose your income. So we go home, watch us some Monday Night Raw or Raw's War to kind of be able to live vicariously through Stone Cold. It helps. This is why wrestling is... is it's why it's been so popular for so long. Basis too. And it's the same reason why a whole new generation of fans got so invested during the mid-2010s when the aforementioned Daniel Bryan rose to the top two. Yep. In fact, the audience got so invested in him to the point that they actually took to hijacking shows in order to get him in the main event of WrestleMania. This is the power of finding a character a wrestling audience can really click with. And Austin and Bryan are far from the only characters who have fit this bill over the years when it comes to being overwhelmingly beloved by crowds both in attendance and watching at home. As there's also been the likes of Eddie Guerrero, Mick Foley, and Jeff Hardy, just to name a few, with the love fans feel for these people coming across as different to the love they might have for their favorite movie characters. Yes. As what we're seeing in the ring is often basically just the real life person with the volume turned up. That said, at the end of the day, no matter how many great characters you have and how great they are at making people fall in love with their personalities, in wrestling, it will inevitably come down to a situation with two men or two women fighting inside of a ring. And that's the next part of what makes wrestling so special. The fact that even once you strip away all that artifice and all that pageantry, even when it just comes down to two people in a ring, Jeez. it's still incredible. And that's because like with the most accomplished dancers, wrestlers, when they're at their best, can tell a complete story through physicality alone. You only have to look as far as WrestleMania 21, which pitted Shawn Michaels against Kurt Angle. Of course, what makes this one immediately interesting is that heading into it, there was no clear dramatic storyline. The issue between them was primarily that each one wanted to prove they were the best wrestler in the world. Yeah. Sure, they had stylistic differences, with the latter a legitimate Olympic gold medalist in amateur wrestling, while the former was more of a high flyer. But both could also work an all-rounder mm -hmm. style too. With this being evident at the start of the bout, as much to the surprise of everyone, Michaels takes the early lead with a lot of technical ground-based moves. In fact, it's not until the 10 minute mark that things start shifting in the opposite direction when upon almost getting caught in his opponent's dreaded ankle lock submission, Michaels retreated to the outside and it's during a brief brawl there that Angle is able to slam the high flyer back into the steel ring post, <laughs> slowing him down and impairing his chances of taking to the air as things progress. Following that, the Olympic gold medalist Classic is an match. absolute machine as he sets about dissecting his opponent, hitting him with everything he has and eventually locking that ankle lock in, almost causing Michaels to have to quit there and then. Fortunately, Unfortunately though, the wounded man is able to make it to the ropes, forcing his rival to break the hold. But by now, the damage is already done. And so despite making something of a brief comeback, and at one point even hitting his signature sweet chin music superkick finisher, he's too hurt to make the pin afterwards. And this leaves Angle with enough time to recover.
recover and once more get the upper hand, with him soon locking that ankle lock in all over again. This time though, he knows enough to keep his opponent in the middle of the rings so there's nowhere for him to escape to. That's right, now Sean can do nothing but lay there crying in pain for what feels like hours, unable to reach the rope. So with no other options left, he's eventually forced to tap out here and live to fight another day, ending one of the greatest wrestling matches of all time. Mm -hmm. Yes, this was the perfect example of how when wrestling is done properly, it can be everything in one, dramatic on the level of the best plays, engaging on the level of the best movies, and memorable on the level of the best music. And it can do it all without the people involved ever having to utter a single word. But it's not all about technical mastery when it comes to telling a story in the ring. No, sometimes it can just be about sheer spectacle or brutality. Yep. Such as can be seen in the work of someone like Gunther in WWE, particularly in the match he had with Sheamus at Clash of the Castle in brutal, 2022. Brutal there, match. the story being told in the ring wasn't so much about the chess match like intricacies of what moves the contestants were doing and when. Rather, it was simply about a big Irishman and an even bigger Austrian beating the ever loving hell out of each other <laughs> with chops it. and fists. That's and if all you, you ever needed. needed evidence that wrestling has more reality to it than you'd think, this is the one to watch. As over the course of its 20 minute runtime, you can see the welts and the blood blisters form on the skin of both men as the physical assault they're enduring leads. They beat the living crap out of each other. Still one of the greatest intercontinental championship matches, bro. People are still talking about this match to this day. They beat the crap out of each other. That's a match. If you want to see some hard-hitting action, brutality at its finest, go watch this match. It's fucking great leaves its mark. Not that Gunther and Sheamus were actually trying to hurt each other here though. No, it was still very much a cooperative affair with a predetermined winner, but with the style of each of these men being tough brawlers and with them agreeing ahead of time to not hold back on one another, it allowed them to put on a more brutal affair than many MMA fights. An affair which eventually saw Sheamus' life bar run out as he simply couldn't take any more punishment. Then of course there are examples of stories in wrestling Classic being told in a right much more too. theatrical way, albeit still without any words being spoken. An absolutely perfect example of which can be found in the recent main event of WrestleMania 40, pitting undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns against his challenger, Cody Rhodes. The story leading up to the whole thing was that for the 1,316 days leading up to this event, Roman Reigns had been absolutely unbeatable, someone who no one had an answer for. Hell, even for the year prior to that, at WrestleMania 39, Cody Rhodes had fallen to the champ and as a result, was left looking broken and defeated in the ring as the show went off the air. But over the year which followed, the challenger continued to build fan support. With this all leading to him eventually winning the Royal Rumble in January of 2024, and in the process of doing so, earning an opportunity to once more challenge for the title at WrestleMania. Of course, this opportunity was almost taken away from him when The Rock, right, the real-life yep. cousin of Roman Reigns, returned to WWE early that year and tried to worm his way into the match itself. In the end though, fan backlash would see Cody get the match he deserved, and this led to the showdown a year in the making on April 7th, 2024. A showdown which played out less like a technical <laughs> chess match, or a brutal shoot-style fight, and more like WWE WWE's own version of Avengers Endgame. Why Max. was this? This was because various figures from the company's past and present appeared over the course of the bout to help even the odds, including current stars who had already been wronged by Romans such as Jey Uso and Seth Rollins, and old legends who also had a history with the men involved, like John Cena and The Undertaker. And in the end, the sheer spectacle of what was taking place led to the crowd reaching a fever pitch, with things utterly exploding when after 33 and a half oh minutes, God, Cody hit his finisher and pinned the champion to finally bring about the downfall <laughs> Of WWE's equivalent to Thanos, the man. Bro, this was, uh, like I said, it's probably going to go down as one of my favorite WrestleMania moments of all time, bro. I'm so dead serious. This is what, this is what wrestling is about. Moments like this, I will never forget where I was watching this live. Watching this with y'all on stream, the movie theaters, this was just, this is what wrestling's about. Moments like this that will last a lifetime. Titan. And it also links directly to our next reason for why wrestling is so special, the nostalgia effect. Now, nostalgia mm -hmm. can be a powerful thing regardless of where it's found. After all, there's a reason why so many people get excited when a movie series from the past gets rebooted. That yeah. it's a just as powerful thing in the world of wrestling too, with the power of that nostalgia being perfectly evident in the aforementioned WrestleMania main event. Just go back and listen to it again. Hear the wild pop from the crowd when John Cena's music hits. It's as loud as it is because so many of those fans in attendance grew up watching him. <laughs> Resiliency! Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah! 
And the same thing can be said for The Undertaker when he makes his arrival too. Yep. Lost my shit. Oh my. Holy Christ! Hell, even The Rock, the man who's supposed to be one of the bad guys in this situation, gets his fair share of cheers too. This shit was so good! Holy this... This nostalgia is something wrestling so frequently good. plays into with it having so many decades of history. If we would have heard that glass break, tears. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Just tears. History. Another two examples were when Stone Cold Steve Austin returned from retirement to have a uh -huh. final bout at WrestleMania 38. Oh, that was so And the cool, other was though. Sting having his own in-ring retirement at AEW's Revolution pay-per-view uh -huh. in 2024. Both these matches were emotional roller coasters and amongst the best of their given years. And a large part of the reason for this was because we were getting to see these figures from our past have their last stand. And finally, after all this time, close out their stories. It was enough to make everyone who was in attendance and those who were at a certain age feel like kids again and that just goes to show the strength wrestling has in being a never-ending story of sorts something which doesn't have an off season and which keeps going week in and week out making new memories for new generations of fans mm -hmm. all while also paying homage to the stars of the past to try to keep older fans happy too and all this brings us to the last element of what makes pro wrestling so special the secret hidden ingredient we've been dancing around for a while now the relationship it has with its fans now to illustrate how important and fan interaction is in wrestling, you only have to look back to the dreaded time that was 2020, mm -hmm. when we were all on lockdown at home, so every sporting event was still going on with no live crowds in attendance. When it comes to wrestling, the fan interaction is such a big part of the show that it's pretty painful to go back and revisit this period now. And that's because with this being live theater in many ways, getting the crowd to play a part in the show is crucial to taking something to that next level. Try going back and watching The Rock vs Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18 with the sound off. It ends up being a pretty average affair, but turn the sound on and suddenly it's electric with every move and the crowd makes these things that much better that's why it's like it's all a part of it the crowd the atmosphere all of this makes it what it is makes it unique makes it special and when people try to shit on it like bruh let people enjoy what they love doesn't make me any less of a person because i'm a fan of wrestling and if you think it does you have some issues, man. The two men in the ring are making, causing the crowd to light up, and as a result, the whole thing feeling like the most important moment in the world. Yes! I cannot believe it! Wow! Oh my God! In fact, the crowd was such an important character in this match, they actually influenced how it ended as while Hogan had gone into the night as the villain, by the time it was over, an audible was called backstage, and he was instructed to go full hero by helping The Rock to fend off an attack from Scott Hall and Kevin Ash. Mm -hmm. And this is far from the only time wrestling fans have taken an okay show and turned it into something next level with their reactions alone. You only have to look as far as May of 2024, where we saw this very phenomenon yep. in action during Backlash, a WWE show which was held live from Lyon, France. Sure, the show that night on its own was fine and had some pretty entertaining moments but that crowd turned it into Ooh. something which will never be forgotten seriously there's not a moment where the 11,000 people in attendance aren't screaming at the top of their lungs and so when jay good, uso bro. comes out to make his entrance uh, the sight that's of every such a fucking cool visual that that's what we got when jay comes out now because of leon france this is what we got now going forward anytime jay comes out look at this visual this is the power of loving for professional wrestling, bro. Look at this. Everyone waving their camera torches around in unison is nothing short of a spectacle which has to be seen to be fully oh appreciated. God, sure, you do get great fan reactions in other sports, but the whole event doesn't rest on the shoulders of those reactions. When it comes to wrestling, however, fan reaction is the third competitor in the ring at all times. And if you remove it from the equation, wrestling loses its air of uniqueness. And that's a uniqueness which is built out of a variety of different elements. Elements we've explained in this video. You see, wrestling might seem silly to a casual observer, as at the end of the day, it's men and women in their underwear pretending to fight one another but if you look at it a little bit deeper than that you'll see that it's an art form unlike anything else and one which deserves to be I'm out too. just yep. as seriously Classic as moment. movies or music yes the stories can be a bit cheap at times but yes. in the context of wwe and other places like it these are usually just a broad canvas for the performer to get their character across with however sometimes the stories can be a lot deeper and more engaging than people mm -hmm. give them credit for with them taking place over the course mm -hmm. of years and covering all aspects of human 
emotion. And don't be fooled into thinking it's all just fake either, because not only is the physicality of what the wrestlers do all too real and all too painful, but the stories being told themselves can often become a lot more legitimate than you might think, leading yeah. to some utterly captivating moments when reality collides into fiction. So if you're not a fan, try checking it out sometime with this new perspective. And you might find that what you're seeing is a little different to what you expected. Hey, this was a fantastic video, bro. I'm going to go ahead and like this because this one definitely deserved to be liked, bro. This was a fantastic video, wrestling flashback. They do not miss when it comes to the, the wrestling style commentary of videos and giving different perspectives and, you know, going back down memory lane. This was great, bro. This was truly, truly great. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> I will say this. I'm not here to tell anybody you got to be a fan of professional wrestling. No, you don't. But I will say this for those who think it's gay or think it's it's weird, whatever the case. Like he said, give it a shot. Watch it. It's some good stuff on Monday Night Raw. Hell, you can watch you some AEW, TNA, whatever. Give it a shot. If you haven't all these years, give it a shot. If you don't like it, you don't like it. That's fine. But don't try to shit on other people that enjoy it. Because it is a form of entertainment that people enjoy. The same way you can say people who watch reality shows. All that's scripted. It's painted as reality, but it's scripted. Why are you watching that? You can say the same thing. You can say, say the same thing about movies. They're literally scripted. Even the movies that are based on true stories are scripted. But people enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with that. People will always enjoy a form of some type of storytelling, scripted or not. People will. Even in boxing and UFC, it's not scripted, but there's stories there. People are more invested if there's a is if, if there's a real beef between two boxers or two fighters. The story gets invented. If you know, it gets more intense. It's just one of those type of things where a good story can sell a fight, can sell a UFC match even more because you want to see these guys go at it. You want to see these guys, you know, see who's the better person, tear each other, tear each other apart. Like, it's it's, a, it's all subjective at the end of the day. So comment down below. Let me know, when did you become a fan of professor, professional wrestling? What do you, if you remember exactly what era it was, what year it was, you know, how old were you when you became a fan of a professional wrestling for me it was attitude there when i was a kid i saw it on tv i was like at my uncle's house i was like what is this i don't know but i like it and i heard kids talking about it and i was like oh this is awesome so but y'all let me know down below when y'all became a fan of professional wrestling but i appreciate all the love support road to 50 k and i'm still gonna be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you next one peace